Uh. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Arts and Crafts Time. I'm your host, Tuna. Today, we're going to be talking about something that is very fun to do called fly tying. Tie flying, or whatever you want to call it. In this kit, I got this cool little kit that you can get from Ten Car Rodco. This kit includes enough material for tying 12 flies of each pattern. So you can tie 12 June Kabaris and you can tie 12 Utah Killer Bugs. Now, you're gonna have pl enough hooks to do 24 flies total out of just this kit. But then, when you're what you're left with, you're gonna have lots of materials left over. So really, you could tie a lot more than that. You just gotta go get yourself some more hooks. Okay, so let's just get started. Let's get into this. I got a few hooks in my little tin here. This vise is a peak, is the manufacturer of the vise. They make really good vices. Uh, this is one that you can get on Tenkara Rodco and then the, the tools that I'm using here today are from Loon Outdoors. This one is the Loon Outdoors uh, Complete tie, tie, fly, uh, blah, 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 blah. The Loon Outdoors Complete Fly Tying Toolkit. There, I nailed that one. Okay. So, Jin Kabari, here we go. All we gotta do is throw on our thread. These hooks are a little slippery. You just gotta get some wraps right over the tag end. Now, see, I've got that tag end hanging there. Cut it. I'm just wrapping down to the bend of the hook a wee bit there. Now, I take life cycle dubbing. Dubbing is cool stuff. There's lots of different ways to dub. This one is probably the easiest way to dub right here. Just take your dubbing, just take a little chunk and twist it right on there. Now, sometimes you need to lick your fingers. Lucky for me, I'm a hot dude. Not like hot by looks, you know, but just hot, like I run hot. So I got sweaty hands. So I don't even look, need to lick my fingers because I got the cameras rolling. I'm a little nervous, got all these lights on me. No need to lick my fingers right now because I got those sweaty little hands. So now all I've got to do, make sure that dubbing's kind of tight on there, get some wraps and just start building up the body and start working my way forward towards the eye of the hook as I'm building that body. So you could do your body a little thinner, a little thicker, just kind of whatever you like, you know? Some, some people like them a little thin, some people like them a little thick. You all know who you are. But uh, just do it the way you like to do it. So I'll mention right now, like the, there's some cool other ways of doing this dubbing that you could do, use dubbing wax which is like this wax that you just put on the thread and it helps all this stuff stick really well. Or you can use a dubbing loop. And those are pretty pretty awesome. Uh, if you guys want to see that sometime, let me know. If you, you're like, dude, Tuna, you got to show me how to do a dubbing loop, man, please. I'll show you. Or you could just YouTube it, find someone else, show you. Okay, I'm almost done with my dubbing here. Now, I don't want to crowd the head of this hook. I have a bad habit of doing that, I just, or crowd the eye of the hook. So I'm staying back away from the eye a little bit. I have a pretty good body on there. I mean, I could go a little bit thicker, whatever, if I wanted to, but I like that right now. So next step, <clears throat> pluck a feather from my hackle. Once I've plucked that feather, I can just pull some of those fibers back and then just pull them right off to give me some room to work. Now I've just got that cool little feather. Cut the nasty stuff. All right, I've just got, just got to do a couple wraps on that to get that to stay on there and then cut that little tag in there. Now, that's pretty short and that's going to be hard to work with. So I grab kind of the benefit of getting that kit is you get these little hackle pliers too. So I just throw those on there and give it a spin. 
until these fibers start popping. And as these fibers of this hackle start to pop out, I can just manipulate them back just by grabbing them with my fingers, and pushing them back. I'm slowly, like barely working towards the eye of the hook with each wrap. And I'm just gonna do a couple wraps because I don't want I don't want to, I don't want that part to be too thick. Okay? I just made a mistake. And the hackle pliers fell off, but that's okay. Just do it again. I just lost like one wrap, so no big deal. Move that one back a little bit. Okay. That one's looking pretty good. Now I just got to get a few wraps to tie off that hackle. Make sure it doesn't pop off. Now here at the eye of the hook, I'm just doing a few more wraps just to kind of make that head look pretty good. Put a little thread on there, just a brown thread. Some people will whip finish, so tie it off right now, and then you can throw on like a different color thread. So I've got this bobbin over here with red thread on it. So if I wanted to do a little red head on there, I could. That's the fun thing about tying flies is, man, you can do whatever you want. You know, if you see like different color you want to try, different threads, you want to throw some wire on here. You know, some people will throw uh, wrap lead around the body of these just to give it um, more, more weight so it can really drop down and get down into the fishy zone. Some people like to leave them uh, unweighted and fish them that way. So that is the June Kabari right there. That's done. You could throw a little head cement on there and just make sure that's, uh, that will just, the head cement will just make sure it's real secure on there, but that's about it. Like I said, you can uh, do different variations of this, add whatever you want to it, different colors and things, and that's about it. June Kabari, everybody. So, if you guys like these videos, let us know, and uh, we'll tie up some more. If you don't like them, then, I don't know, just, you need to reconsider your life choices then. There we go. That's it for me.